note about schools that we mentioned earlier this week that used to have football programs. Now, none of them that I can remember were anything really a part of high-level football. Now, again, they might have been 40, 50 years ago. Um, then there are some that have, like, is it UConn? It's Villanova. Villanova mm -hmm. used to, you know, and, and they've been back and forth. But then if you are no longer a part of what is a true national championship at the highest level, and there's nothing wrong with what Sam Houston State has done or the many times that North Dakota State has won it or anyone else in between like Mary Harden Baylor, but there is that level, that high level. Look at this graphic, the University of Penn, the Quakers. Look at what they averaged three years ago. 7,000 fans at Franklin uh, Stadium. Is it Franklin Stadium or Franklin Field? I mean, Franklin, Franklin Field. Field. It's Franklin Field. Now, this is the Penn Quakers, and there was a time that the Ivy League ran college football, and they won national titles. This stadium, the black and white picture that Tony Altimore shared with us, the attendance that they had at Franklin Field, used to be in the mid-80,000s. Tony shared this with me in a text or tweet. Penn used to average between 75 and 86,000 every week in the 60s. Played 9 to 10 home games a year because, in capital letters, everybody, Notre Dame, Ohio State included, wanted to split their huge stadium revenue and TV money from the contract with ABC. And now they're averaging 7,000. And one, there's also the, the educational part of it, the academic part of it, I guess you could say, and even that what is a commitment or not. But that used to be packed at Penn, at Franklin Field, and now no longer a part of the it part of it. Not that they care, probably, but I guess they don't. No, but, I mean, you can <laughs> – things can change in a hurry. That's what can yeah, happen. I mean, I mean things and, change. So. And the 213 asked me, and I, and I remember I read off like 25 schools. Most of them are basketball schools now that used to have football. They've just, let, they've just moved on, and football's no longer in some ways bringing them down or killing their budget. Or, and, and it's all about men's basketball. And some of them, it's endowment factors as well. Yeah, and, and look, the, the Ivy League used to be it. Now everything changed, you know, after World War II and more people started going to college and – Less people started working in factories, right? You know, like that, and then, and the the you know economics of the country or the plans of the country changed. But uh, the GI Bill certainly changed all that. But but yeah, the you know the Ivy League used to be it for everything. They were the best at everything. Now they're the best at some things. The Army Navy game, mm -hmm. been there that, at Franklin Field, and um, I don't know how many times. Uh, let's see here. I thought, I'm trying to figure out how many times they may have played there. And, and obviously they played at Lincoln, which financial field they will be down in, in the future as well. Um, but golly, man, they, they are, and wasn't it Army, Navy, that Craig and off the radar the other day said they're going to be they're spreading them around all Boston over the place? And yeah. DC and yeah. Yeah. So that's that, and just an idea. That doesn't mean that someone who's in that 70,000 now that gets left out, and I don't know who that would be. Is there anyone in college football that has a stadium capacity over 70,000 that would be left out? I don't know that. No, I don't think so. I don't so. know that. And that doesn't mean if you have 70,000, you're more important than somebody who has 50 or 40 or 60,000, but... Uh, I, I don't know of anybody that would be left out in all of this that might average or have a stadium capacity of 65 or 70 or more thousand. I think most of them are sitting pretty. All right, when we come back, the uh, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock,